we are creating a platform for those who are curious. One that tells the story from the artist's perspective. Moments in time captured from the innovators who are reshaping dance, music, theater, and the visual arts. This is the Working Artist Project. Today, my guest is Miss Deborah Cartwright. Welcome to the Working Artist Project. Hi, happy to be here. Oh man, world-renowned artist. No, not world. <laughs> <laughs> so I just I want to start things out. I want to I want to know what about your story. Like, where did you start, and how did you get here? Um, wow, that's all. That's getting right into it. Okay, well, I painted since I was a little little kid. I can't remember. Someone asked me my first painting a while ago. Definitely can't remember. But I feel like all kids paint and draw, so you can't really, uh, you know, go by that. Um, went to University of Virginia. I wanted to become a lawyer because oh. I was and still am into social issues and mm. history. And it's become trendy now, but um, wasn't right. so much back then. Um, but that's what I wanted to do was crusade for the rights for people. For the people. For the people. So I, I went to UVA and switched my major five times until I ended up... Five times? Yeah, until I st- stopped fighting it. How long were you there? I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, my dad said there's no choice. You have to graduate in four years. Oh. You have no choice um, if I'm going to help you at all. So, right, right. yeah, I got it together, finally. Uh, majored in art history. Oh, cool. Still thinking I was going to go to law school. Okay. But I didn't know what to do. And I had this friend, Paula, who I worked on the magazine with. And she said, you are obsessed with magazine layout. That's Wait, like which all magazine? you do. It's a school magazine? It was a or? school magazine okay. called Pride that was very small. She made me the art director. I knew nothing about Photoshop. I taught myself everything. Mm-hmm. And I made these awful designs. But like they look... <laughs> I knew nothing about design, um, but I was obsessed with it. I was absolutely inside, obsessed. And she's like, you got to go to school for this. So I was like, you're right. I do want to work in magazines. Applied and went to Parsons School of Design. Okay. And then like a year and a half into it, I got a job at Essence Magazine. Oh, shit. Yeah. So, which was here my- in New York City? Or? Yeah, here in oh, New okay. York City, which was my dream. Yeah. As for my illustration, I guess that started two years ago when I was coming home and at the same time transitioning to natural hair and also wanting to learn fashion illustration. Looking at the fashion illustrations, I was really upset that it was all white people. Right. Right. So I came home, practiced fashion illustration, but put an afro on top of their heads because that's what... I was trying to I was trying to train myself into seeing my natural hair as beautiful and fashion forward. Yeah. And also learn fashion illustration at the same time. And what I did was I tried to start a log for myself that I was doing a fashion illustration every single day and I okay. put it on Instagram. Oh, that's to dope. keep a log for myself. Not and then people Yeah, and then people just came from nowhere oh, and were wow. like, Oh, whoa, this is cool. Da 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 sharing, sharing, sharing. And I'm like, Okay, whatever. Right. I'm like, just so I can keep a log that I'm doing this every day yeah. is why I put it on Instagram. So you were just doing it for your own I was doing it for my own like, benefit. It's right. like, I was like, oh, cool. Instagram can be like a gallery. Right. Where I can keep everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm on it anyway. So it's just easily for me to look back and see what I did every day. Right. So that was the, that was the goal. And then um, it just kind of, I don't know. So... I want to, I'm curious, like, I'm very intrigued by your art. Right? Yeah. So, like, how did you come to that that process in your um, development? Like, what, what made you choose to, to, you know? Well, I paint for myself. Oh, so it was selfish. It was selfish. It's still selfish. I'm really happy that people love it and they connect with it. And I'm, obviously, that's great. But mm-hmm. I, I still draw for myself. Right. And to get out and I, I guess I, I have said that I draw to help our self-confidence in a whole I, I connect the most with black women and I feel like 
we've been through so much, still go through so much with, you know, media images saying how you're supposed to look, how you're supposed to be, Mm -hmm. um, with the tropes we've dealt with historically, being the strong black woman, being the mammy, all these things that I don't feel like I am. And I don't feel like the black women I know are. So I wanted to create images that I'd like to see out there. So I dig that of, of, and that's where it starts of, of me. And, and I'm happy other people connect with that plight of like not feeling connected to what our stereotype is. Right. So are you like, how do you uh, decide to like depict the women? Like, are you going throughout the city, like checking it out? Like, oh, that woman's holding a baby. That's dope. And like oh. sketching or. No, no, no. How does that work? Well, also with the whole baby thing. Okay. Um, I've only done a few ones with children. A lot of people want me to do breastfeeding and pregnancy and all of that but i didn't want to do black women it's in relation to someone else Mm -hmm. i wanted to make us a central character so when i do things with a couple or i do things with a baby or it's all centralized on the black woman not her as this mother type which i feel like we've been throughout history i want us to be our own singular person with our own stories and our own depth um how do i do that I have pages of magazine clippings and I Pinterest like crazy and I get inspiration from fashion. Yeah. Um, Magazines and poses and, and the new collections and things like that. And then I, I put black people in them and you just make it work. And I just put black people in them and I'm just like, all right, now it's mine. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's dope, man. That's dope. So I also noticed that, that you uh, you have some social commentary in some of your work, you know? Oh, like yeah. You got the one picture with the, the, the it's a woman hugging her son. Shoot, it says, right. don't shoot. Yeah. Yes. So that one, that one to me is very powerful because it's like a strong black woman and this little helpless child. Yeah. And, you know, we all as a people feel that, you know what I mean? Especially with Tamir Rice and all these other kids. And that's, I, I, I did that one um, during a protest in Harlem and I... Her facial expression in that one, as all of my facial expressions of my black woman, weren't meant to be strong. Mm-hmm. It was more meant to be scared oh, and why, vulnerable. Why is that? Because I feel like that's what we've had to be for so long. And that's been our, our trope. But we feel and we're vulnerable and we're... We have deeper feelings than being this backbone of a community. We are, I don't know, we have this autonomy to us where we, it's hard, it's, it's hard to put it in words. I've also been watching Underground, which is totally (laughs) like messing up my head right now and what black women have been through. Have you watched it? No, I don't. Okay, sorry, sorry. But the the, the black women are going through so much and they're so strong in that, Mm -hmm. but they're also scared and they're, they're frustrated and... I want to show that we we have sometimes we feel helpless. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we feel like the quote unquote damsel in distress. Like right. we grew up with all these um it's like a juxtaposition for black women really cuz you're supposed to be this strong pillar of a community, but we've also grown up with the princess stereotype where we want right, to right you know, be taken care of. We want to see, be seen as feminine. We want to be the ball, the bell of the ball. And so to, those are just two different levels that, that people don't usually see us as that part. Mm-hmm. We don't, they don't see us as the, the fragile feminine. Da, da, da. So I kind of go to the extremes in mind. Um, I've had so many people tell me like, my daughter didn't see black princesses. And so I show her your drawings and she's just, yeah. She's just loving it because right. it makes her feel pretty. Um, but yeah, I'm, my work is kind of to fight the trope of the strong black woman. Yes, it's good to be strong, but you know we also have to be recognized as human. But don't you think that you, you mentioned that, uh, that you want to be looked at as like feminine? Mm-hmm. But don't you think that black women are overly sexualized and, and like looked in like that? I was just having this conversation the other day that sexual sexuality or the sexualization of black women um, needs to be kind of taken over by us again and be like coming from us rather than 
fed to us. I think okay. it's great to be um, a sexual being. We're all sexual beings, but you know, it ha- it, there's then that goes back to like feminist principles and things about how you can be. Um, it's like the male gaze, like not like owning. It's like re-owning your sexuality. Like okay. these are deep questions you're asking me as I'm trying to get into <laughs> it. We, we, can, we need to re-own that sexuality. And that's why I don't do... Okay, so here's a... There's so many things going on in my head right now. So I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine that there are poses for the male gaze that, that women do. And there are poses for the female gaze that women do. Poses that are for the male gaze that are seen sexy and for the female gaze that are seen sexy. Okay. And they do that in um, fashion, in like photography, different poses and things like that where, and they could be wearing the same thing, but one's going to appeal to men and one's going to appeal to women. There's a whole psychology going on. There's a whole psychology going on. Wow, okay. So I try to make sexy images that appeal to our sexuality. Oh, okay. as opposed to the male side. And I know I'm doing that right because 90% of my followers are women. Gotcha. And I have women in underwear. I have women laid across, you know, the bed with just like a sheet over them. I have women like in what scantily clad with their breasts out, all of this. But mm-hmm. the poses that I use and the way that her, and her facial expression is not like a come hither. It's more of a sexuality within yourself Hmm. sensuality is what i I try to go for right so you don't care about the black man's opinion (laughs) is that what is that what you're saying because i've also Um, noticed you 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 don't paint many black men well uh there's a few reasons for that okay one um like my illustration agent has said before like most people specialize in one or the other men or women if you try to paint men, they're going to look kind of feminine. Okay. If, you, if you're a man that paints, or if you're a painter that post, paints mostly men, your men are going to, or your women you're are going to look, look masculine. masculine right. So it's, um, it's where your strengths are, really. But another reason I don't paint men is because I'm interested in telling my story. Okay. And I feel like we all should be able to tell our own stories. And I like to, I have a lot of, male artists friends Mm -hmm. and they tell their story very well and i let them (laughs) i let them do that and i support that and i listen to them so i think um that's a disconnect between the sexes that we should listen to each other and respect where each other are coming from Mm -hmm. um and yeah not try to tell each other's stories right so what advice would you give to uh you know, some young people checking this out and they want to follow in your footsteps. Paint every single day, multiple times a day. If you have a full-time job, get up an hour earlier and paint. Wow. That's what I did. First thing in the morning, you paint. First thing in the morning, I'm painting. Going to work, painting your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I was No, it was, it, I, I thank God at, um, I had an amazing boss and like, as soon as the work day was over, I would paint. I would just sit there and. At work? Yeah. As, as soon as I finish my work, I would finish my work. It would be after the clock. And I'd be like, all right, let me get this in because I want to go to the gym. But I want to get a painting real quick. And the thing with watercolors is you can take them everywhere. Right. So you can paint anywhere. I wish I could do it with drums. Get a day job. and be like, I know. Oh, and be oh. like, all right, work day's done. Right. Just tick it, tick it, tick it. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, she was, oh, man, she was totally supportive. And, like, she's like... She's like, I'm just going to watch. And this is the beginning, beginning. And she was like, I'm just going to watch you blow up. You're going to do so well. And I'm yeah. like, thank you. You're yeah. so sweet. And That's for amazing. believing in me. Um, but yeah, just trudge at it and and let go a little bit. Like, also, okay. contact people you want to work with. There you go. Several, several times. Because... Be that um, squeaky wheel. Be that squeaky wheel. Because yeah. you know with dealing with me, I, it's not like I'm not trying to answer. I just am like, oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> so they said, it's just like you, you got to be persistent. Be right. so persistent, especially when you know you're the person's going to want to work with you. Yeah. They just don't know it yet. Right. They don't know it. So you got to tell them. You got to be like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's how, honest, that's how I got the, the ebony spread. Oh. Is I emailed ebony. 
Yeah. And I was like, hey guys, uh, 